everyone, welcome to another Procreate tutorial. This is the drawing that we will be completing in today's video. If you are new here, I mainly post Procreate tutorials, so if that is something you are interested in, go ahead and subscribe. Before we get started, the only thing that you will need to do is download the color palette and the bear outline and the deer images so that we don't have to hand draw those. I have it all linked in the description below. For the color palette, just double tap the file that downloads and it'll automatically pop it into Procreate so that you can use the same colors as you follow along with the video today. And with the images, go ahead and save them to the files on your iPad so that they stay in PNG format. I will also post the canvas dimensions, color profile, and layers needed on the screen so that you can use those to set up your canvas. So take a minute to get everything ready and then come back and we'll get started. So this is the color palette that we will be working with today. So let's just go ahead and get straight into it. The first thing that we will do is set our background color layer. So we'll go to our layer menu on this background color layer. Click that to open up our color picker and we will grab this first color on the first row of our color palette to fill it in with that color. Next we will be on layer one and we will go ahead and first add our bare outline which you should have downloaded. So we are going to do that by being on layer one. Click on the gear icon under add, click insert a file since you should have saved it to your files. And then wherever you saved it, go ahead and find it and then select it to add it onto our canvas. It should touch all the edges of your canvas. If for some reason you need to resize it, go ahead and do so. Make sure that uniform is turned on and as long as your canvas is a square, you should be able to line it up nicely with your edges like so. Since it's a PNG with a transparent background, you should be able to see our background color through this. And on our layer menu, you should see kind of like a bare cutout on this layer. If for some reason yours imported with like a full layer with a white bear and a brown outline or something like that, what you can do is on this layer one, grab your selection tool, set it to automatic, select the middle area where the white is, and then click the arrow tool and drag it off your canvas and then click the arrow tool again. So that way that should cut out the bare image and you should see the background color through it. However, hopefully you don't have to do that and it just imported properly with the bare already cut out with our background color showing through it. So that being said, we are going to draw everything below this bare cutout layer. So let's go ahead and get started on everything else and let's add a new layer, drag it below our bare cutout layer and we are going to grab our second color on the top row of our color palette. And the first thing that we're going to do is draw some mountains in the background. So let's go ahead and grab our monoline brush under the calligraphy tab to do so. I am going to have it set at about 20%. And I'm just going to start on the left edge off the side of my canvas, kind of right where his mouth would be. And I am going to start drawing up and draw some mountain shapes, some really nice pointy ones going in various directions, dropping down and then maybe going back up a, again, dropping down again. You know, we wanna see a good amount of the sky and we will add some birds to it at some point, but just do this all the way across or we'll go off the side of our canvas on the right and then fill it in below it to fill in this entire bottom area to complete our mountain image. Next, we'll go to our layer menu, add a new layer above the mountains. So next we will draw our frontmost hill so that we can draw the trees behind it. So we will go to our layer menu, add a new layer above our mountain layer, still below our bare outline. Grab the third color on the top row. Same monoline brush and essentially I'm just going to make a wavy line right about where his legs meet his body. I'm going to start on the very edge of my canvas though, so that I can again kind of connect it on the other side and then fill it in below like this. 
Then let's go ahead and do our trees. So we will go to our layer menu, add a new layer, drag it below our hill layer that we just created above our mountain layer in the background. Grab the fourth color on the top row and we are going to use symmetry to draw one tree and then we will duplicate it for the rest of them. So we are going to turn on symmetry. So under the gear icon, under canvas, click to turn on the drawing guide, then click edit drawing guide, click symmetry, and you should see a vertical line. If you do not, you might need to select vertical under your symmetry options down here, but make sure it's set up vertically and then go ahead and click done. Now on the layer menu, go back to it and just make sure that this layer that we're on now says assisted. It should, if yours does not, you can click on it and turn on drawing assist so that we can use symmetry on this layer. And again, fourth color on the top row, same monoline brush that we've been using this whole time. And I am just going to zoom in here and right on my symmetry line, I am just going to start a ways up here. So this is where the bottom of our tree will be. I'll just start a ways up, even above the mountains is okay. And I'm going to just start on the very center line, draw a line going down and out just a little bit like this. Hold it down until Procreate turns it into a perfectly straight line. Again, nothing super wide, just maybe slightly wide like this. Let that go and then click Edit Shape if you need to, to line it up better at the top. So it comes to a really good point right there and make sure that your line extends well underneath our hill here so that all the way across they will be underneath the hill. Then go ahead and click your brush again and just kind of pretend to connect it down here wherever you stopped your line, even though it's behind our hill layer, and then fill this in. Now we'll draw some branches off of our tree trunk here. So starting at the top, I am just going to swoop out and then back in out and then in, out and then in, getting a little bit wider every time I go down and a little bit bigger as well. I'll just make as many as I can going all the way down until I get to the very last one that's kind of under my hill. And then I am going to start filling these in. So a really easy way to do it is to drag and drop your color to fill one in. And then up top here, it says continue filling with recolor. Mine went away, but click it. And depending on where the cursor landed, it might have filled in your background, but just go ahead and drag it over to an open space on the tree and then continue tapping around to fill in all of the other little spaces. If that's not working for you, you might just need to go ahead and manually drag and drop each of them or use your brush. I will also go back in with my brush and just make sure that I got any little areas that, might, that I might have missed when filling them in. And you can also take time to kind of smooth things out if you need to. Like this one got a little kind of wonky on the bottom. Because this will be our main tree that we will use. So now that we have one really good one done, we are just going to make duplicates of it for the rest. So we are going to do two layers of trees, one darker and one lighter. So right now we're doing the darker one in the background. So since we won't need symmetry anymore, I'm going to just go to my gear icon and click to turn off the drawing guide so that I don't have to see that line anymore. And now we have our one main tree layer here with our pretty tree on it. So I will just leave this one placed here and then I'll make a duplicate of it. So slide to the left and hit duplicate. I will click the arrow tool I'll move it around a little bit and potentially resize it to on uniform. So I might make a little bit smaller one over here, make it a little bit lower, make a duplicate of that one. Maybe move another one over here, kind of a smaller one again, maybe this time a little closer to our original one so that they're not like so perfect looking, you know, kind of space them out randomly. And I'm probably going to have room for only about four of these. I'm going to leave this front area mostly untouched and focus on this main area here. This one can even be going off kind of the side of him. 
like so. Then I will go ahead and find the top tree on all of these dark ones here. Make a duplicate of that one. Click on it, set it to alpha lock. Grab the fifth color on the top or the lighter green. Go back to my layer menu and on this one with alpha lock on, I'm going to click on it and click fill layer. So now I have a lighter green tree here to play with. So I will grab my arrow tool and I will just kind of move it around and kind of stagger it with the ones in the back. Go to my layer menu, make another duplicate, increase the size and move it around. Maybe I'll put it over here. Make another duplicate. And this bigger one, maybe I'll put one more up front here. And maybe another kind of smaller one in here, like so. So again, just kind of stagger them around, nothing too perfect. But I ended up with four of each color, so do as many or as few as you want of different kind of sizes and separation. And then I'm going to go to my layer menu and I'm going to snap these four lighter ones together on the same layer. And then same thing with the, the next four, the darker ones, I'm going to snap those four onto the same layer as well. So now I have my two tree layers with all of the trees of the same color together on the same layer. So now that that's done, I am going to next add the deer, which was another file that you should have downloaded so that we don't have to hand draw these deer. So I'm going to add another new layer above my tree layer, still below this little hill, this little rolling hills layer that's in the front. So still below that. Go to my gear icon, click add, click insert a file with the deer on it. Find that file that you should have downloaded and click to insert it. And then again, if yours for some reason imported with a white area filling in the rest around your deer on the layer, click the selection tool, set it to automatic, click anywhere on the white to select all the white areas, and then click the arrow tool and drag it off the screen so that you're just left with the main deer with nothing around them so that we can see everything else on our picture. But now it's just kind of time to place them. So even though they're on the same layer, we can move them around if necessary. So with this layer, grab the selection tool, set it to freehand, and you can just drag around one of them and move them around if you need to resize them at all. And I just want to place each of them so that all four of their paws are at least touching or underneath the hill. So there's no gaps there. So see, there's a little bit of space underneath his feet. So I am going to select around him and just move him down just a smidge so that he's underneath the hill and so it looks like they're standing on top of it. Okay, so now your picture should look like this. I promise everything will pop a lot more when we're done with all of our shadows and textures and everything. It's looking kind of flat right now. The last thing we're going to do is add some birds. So we're going to go to our layer menu, add a new layer above our deer layer, grab the sixth color on the top row, same monoline brush at 20%, and we are just going to make some birds in the sky using the typical like V shape technique here. So we'll just do a few of those of varying sizes. I ended up with four here. So just do whatever you like. And that is the last of our new layers. So now we can get into the shadows and the textures and everything to make it really pop and look all paper cut like. So here's what we will do. We will go to our layer menu. The first thing that I'm going to do is set all of my layers to alpha lock. So just go down and make sure that they all have all alpha lock turned on. Uh, the only one that should already is maybe one of your tree layers, the lighter one. So that one is already turned on but all the rest of them still need to turn on, so like that. And now we're just going to start from the bottom since we're already here. So I'm going to make a duplicate of my mountain layer. The one on the bottom, I will select that one. I will go to my color palette, select the first color on the second row. And this is going to be our shadow color. So back to our layer menu, this bottom mountain layer. Click on it and click fill layer. Click on it again, turn alpha lock off now. Click the N on this layer and drag it up to multiply. 
and then click the wand icon, click Gaussian blur, and let's drag this up to maybe 10% to create a nice shadow beneath our mountain, which we will move later so we can see it better. Okay, but now we're just going to do that for each of these. So, so same thing. So next is our darker tree layer. Slide to the left, hit duplicate, the bottom one. Uh, we already have our color selected, so it's going to be the same color each time. So all we need to do is click the layer, fill layer, click it again, turn off alpha lock, click the N on the layer to drag it up to multiply, and then wand icon, Gaussian blur, up to 10%. Okay, next tree layer, slide to the left, duplicate, the bottom one, click on it, click fill layer, click again, turn off alpha lock, click the end, drag it up to multiply, wand icon, Gaussian blur, 10%. And the deer is the next one, slide to the left, hit duplicate, bottom layer, click it, fill layer, click it again, turn off alpha lock. Click the N on the layer, drag it up to multiply. Wand icon, Gaussian blur. Let's do like 8% for the deer. As our shapes get a little bit smaller, uh, we want to do less Gaussian blur, otherwise it just turns into a big old blurry blob, like with our birds especially. So let's do those next. So our bird layer, slide to the left, hit duplicate. The bottom one, click it, click fill layer. Click it again, turn off alpha lock, click the N on the layer, drag it up to multiply. Wand icon, Gaussian blur. So see if we did like 10%, there's literally just a big blur behind them. We do kind of want to still see the shape of the birds, so maybe let's just do like 5% for the birds, like so. Okay, and then next is our hill layer. Slide to the left, duplicate. Uh, fill layer, turn off alpha lock. Drag it up to multiply, wand icon, Gaussian blur, and this is a pretty big layer, so we will do, so we'll do 10% for this one as well. And then lastly, our bare outline, we will do this one also. So slide to the left, hit duplicate, the bottom one, click it, fill layer, click it again, turn off alpha lock, and drag up to multiply, wand icon, Gaussian blur, and let's drag this one to like 15% since it's such a big layer. Okay, so now those are all of our shadow layers, but we want to see them a little bit better. So I'm going to go to my layer menu and select all my shadow layers. So they should just be this, the ones right underneath each of our layers. So just every other layer you should see that you should see they're all like a gray color. So slide to the right to select each one of them like so. And then let's click the um, arrow tool. So just so that we can see them a little bit better, let's drag them to the right a little bit, like so. So now you can kind of see like more of our branches, our tree branches and our birds and the, the front of our deer very, very nicely. Um, the only thing that I don't like is the bird, is the bird shadow is a little bit too dark. So I'm going to go to my layer menu, find the bird shadow layer, which is right here. Click the M to open up this menu again, and I'm just going to drag the opacity down. To maybe 65 percent to make those a little bit lighter they were just way too dark so make any other adjustments that you would like and then we will move on to our next step which is to make a white little outline on the sides of each of our layers to make them look like cut paper this is a little trick that i learned from my buddy joel create shout out to joel for this if you haven't checked him out on youtube you should so what we're going to do is kind of do the same thing that we just did before, but a little bit different. So let's again start on the bottom. So find our mountain layer, the colored one that is still on alpha lock. So not the shadow one, but the one above it. Slide to the left and hit duplicate. The one on the bottom again. Grab our first color on the last row, now the bright white. Back to our layer menu. So this duplicate layer on the bottom with alpha lock turned on. Click on it and click fill layer. So as we do this, we'll have the main color, the white one underneath it, and the shadow layer below that for each shape that we have. And then we're going to grab our arrow tool, and we are just going to tap up and to the left like three or four times till we can see this nice edge on our mountains of white. So we're going to do that to each one. So now our first is our darker tree layer slide to the left on the the main one with alpha lock turned on slide to the left and hit duplicate the one below it now click on it and click fill layer 
click the arrow tool again, tap up and to the left just a few times till we can see a nice little highlight there. Next tree layer, slide to the left, click duplicate the bottom one, click on it and click fill layer. Again, arrow tool and tap up a couple times. Okay, deer layer, slide to the left, hit duplicate, bottom one, click on it and click fill layer. Arrow tool, up a few times. Uh, bird layer is next. Slide to the left and hit duplicate. Bottom one click fill layer. Arrow tool a few times. And then our hill layer here. Slide to the left, hit duplicate. The bottom one click on it, click fill layer. And arrow tool and again tap it up and to the left a few times till we can see a nice highlight there. We will not do it with our bare outline layer. We're not really using it as a paper layer, but more so just a kind of window to the paper below. So it's just going to stay as is. So the last thing that we're going to do to make this all look like paper is we're going to go to our layer menu, add a new layer above our hill layer, still below our two bare outline layers. Click the N on this layer and drag it up to linear burn. Grab the second color on the second row and for our brush we are going to grab the soft pastel brush under the sketching category and this is going to give everything a nice paper texture i'm just going to set it to 100 percent and i am just going to very lightly drag this all across my canvas not picking my brush up just doing it in one fluid motion and there we go that really brightens up our whole picture, makes our colors really pop, and gives everything a nice paper texture. If it's a little too much for your taste, you can go to the layer menu and on this layer now, click on this LB, which is the linear burn to open up our menu again, and you can drop the opacity down to like 70% or something like that to kind of lessen the effect, but still leave the texture and everything. So that being said, that is our last step and that completes our picture today. So I hope you had fun. If you did, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more tutorials from me in the future. If you would like to share your drawing on Instagram, I would love to see it. So go ahead and post it and then tag me so that I can check it out. While you're there, go ahead and give me a follow so that you can see what I'm working on next. Thanks for watching.